In this video I'll talk about reverse cameras in general and soon I'll make a few videos on how to use them to park. To turn the reverse camera on, you simply put in reverse. Usually there'll be three horizontal lines which indicate the distance between your vehicle and what's behind and two vertical lines, the vehicle width guidelines which also indicate the distance between your vehicle and whatever's on the sides. They're usually slightly wider than the vehicle in order to give a bit of a safety margin. Sometimes there will also be a little vertical line like this one, which represents the center of the vehicle. On some longer vehicles, like pickup trucks or large SUVs, there could be more than three lines since the vehicle is longer, but the ones that are the most important to determine your distance from what's behind are these two, the ones closer to the vehicle, especially the red one. Now reverse cameras and the distances the lines indicate will vary a bit from vehicle to vehicle, but I actually measured the distances from this one and they are more or less as follows. When aligning the third line, this is the distance you have, about 4 feet. With the second line, this distance, about 2 feet. And with the closest line, which is usually red, about 1 foot. Check your vehicle's manual for more accurate info on those distances. Now notice something here. For these examples, I aligned the lines with the bottom of the other vehicle's bumper. In the last example, when I aligned the red line, I had one foot between the bumpers. But as you can see, it's the middle line that's aligned with the middle of the bumper. So when aligning with the line on the floor, or with the sidewalk border, you can align them with this red line. But when reversing towards a vehicle, don't align the red line with the middle of the bumper, or you'll risk hitting the bumper. The reason for that is that since the middle of the bumper is higher and protruding, it'll be closer to your vehicle than the bottom of the bumper. So if you use the middle of the bumper of the other vehicle as a reference and you want to keep a safe distance of at least one foot, don't reverse any further than the middle line. As for the vertical lines, some vehicles will have only one set of them, like this one. In this case, these lines always stay parallel to the vehicle and they indicate where the vehicle will go if you keep reversing with the wheels straight. And some vehicles have two sets of lines. These blue ones are the same as the ones we saw previously, and these curved ones indicate more or less the path that the vehicle will follow when you turn the steering wheel, and the amount that they will curve will depend on how much you turn the steering wheel. If you see this distance from the sides from inside the vehicle, this is the distance you have from the vehicles on the sides, more or less 1 meter or 3 feet from each side. As for how wide you see, well here is what I see in the camera, and this is what I see when I turn my head. I didn't see this vehicle in the camera, and this one either. As helpful as reverse cameras are, they don't see as much as you do when turning your head and using your mirrors. And that's something that you'll need to be aware of. You might not see other vehicles or users coming towards you from the sides, especially if they're closed. Basically, that's the same limitation you have when reversing while checking your mirrors. Like here, I only see this car in my central mirror, and if I turn my head, I see all this, so I can see what's approaching the car from both sides. That's why I always recommend you look back when reversing, and then check the mirrors whenever you're getting closer to something. Same thing with the reverse camera. Start by reversing while looking back, then when you're closer, check the camera. Remember, the reverse camera is only an assistant, and like any other assistant, it's there to help you, not to replace you. Now some vehicles also emit a beeping sound whenever there's something close behind. Be aware that this is a separate system of sensors independent from the camera itself. It doesn't mean that because the vehicle has a reverse camera that it'll automatically have this system. So keep that in mind when purchasing a vehicle if it's something you're interested in. Now for the exam, some places don't allow you to use the reverse camera when parking or at least not only the reverse camera. They still want to see if you can do your verifications properly. So if you're allowed to use it where you're doing your exam, before reversing, do your verifications, then turn your head to look back or check your mirrors when reversing, whatever is required, and then when you're getting close to whatever is behind, be it a vehicle or any other obstacle, or even just the line of the parking spot, then check the camera. That's the point of a reverse camera anyway, to check if something is close behind, in the zone that you can see from inside the vehicle, not to reverse for long distances. If the camera is dirty or obstructed by snow, condensation and so on, and you want to clean it, it's usually located somewhere over the license plate, 
near the vehicle's logo or somewhere around there. So yes, reverse cameras are a very good option to invest in when you buy a car. Nowadays, since most new vehicles come equipped with an LCD screen for the GPS and entertainment system, they also have a reverse camera. If it comes as an option and you have the extra money, I strongly recommend you go for it. While some other options might not be that useful, this one is very useful. But if your vehicle doesn't have one, or if you found the perfect vehicle you want to purchase but it doesn't have one, don't worry, you can buy one separately and install it on the vehicle. So stay tuned for those videos about how to use reverse cameras when parallel parking and parking at 90 degrees, where they're by far the most useful, either when parking or exiting a parking spot. In one of my videos on parallel parking, I show you how to align the other car's license plate in your passenger window as a reference to get the right distance from the sidewalk. I've had a few comments from people telling me they are either too close or too far from the sidewalk when using this method, so I'll explain what you need to do to fix that in the next video. So stay tuned, stay safe, and see you soon.